In today's video, I'm going to try and help you understand the layout of the CG Anglo Concertina. Uh, this particular one has got three rows. It's got um, a C row, that's the kind of the middle row. All the notes here are found in the key of C major. Uh, the row nearest to me, nearest to the back of the concertina, is the G row. Now it's found in the key of G major. And the row at the front uh, is kind of a, an extra helper row with lots of extra sharps, accidentals, if you like, a few odd A's and F's and things. Um, but basically, uh, let's just look at the C row. So that's the middle row coming up here on the left hand side and carrying over here on the right hand side. All notes on this row are either C, E or G, in other words notes found in the chord of C major. If you put those three notes together, C, E and G, now let's do that now, let's play these three notes here, that's a chord of C major. So all of the notes on this row, left hand, right hand, are all either C or E or G. Uh, and also on the G row, the row nearest the back, all the notes are found in the chord of G major, so they're all G's and B's and D's. Uh, in general, these notes repeat every four buttons. So if I play this note here, which is a G, and I come along four buttons, same row, I've got another G, come over here, four buttons higher, got another G, so they're all G's. So these are all C's, okay? And these are all E's, all four buttons apart. There's an E there, and there's an E there and another E there. So they repeat every four buttons. Let's do that on the uh, the G row now. Let's play this note here, which is a G, uh, root note if you like, G. So there's a G there, four above, another G, four above, another G, you get the idea. And if you look at the chart that I've provided on my website, and the address is on your screen now, you can see I've color coded uh, uh, a little chart for you there, colour coded the notes so you can see where the repeats come. What is a little strange, and I'm still yet to understand this, is that on the uh, C row, the first button gives me a nice low C note, which is very nice if I want to do a kind of a umpa pattern. It gives me a C note on the push, nice root note, and then if I pull that, that note, gives me a nice G, so a C and a G is what you'd expect. If I go to the G row and I'm expecting to find a G root, I don't find one. Instead I find a B, so I have this kind of, which doesn't sound so good, does it? Um, so if I wanted to get the same effect, I'd have to go to the C row for the G note there. And then I'd have to come here for a D. You get the idea, it's, it's not, not so good, is it? And there's probably a, a really good reason for that. For the moment, I can't fathom it. On my old Hona D40, uh, the first button on the G row was in, in D, G, and the pull note was a, a D. Um, so I don't really understand why it's B uh, with a pull of uh, A, but it is, so there we are. Uh, if I discover why, I will let you know in a, a subsequent video. So most notes on the pull on the C row uh, are the notes not found in the major chord. So in other words, they're the, all the Bs, the Ds, the Fs and the As. I'm just going to ignore uh, button one for a moment and I'm going to play uh, these notes. So I've got B, D, F, A, B, D, F, A, another B there. So B, D, F, A, these are all the notes not found in the chord of C major. Um, and so if I added those two together, the notes on the push and the pull, I'd have a, a major scale, and I'll come to that in, in another video. Uh, you've got this G here uh, on the C row, which gives you another, another G. So obviously that note is kind of a, an odd, odd man out. But So the notes on buttons, two, three, four, and five are exactly an octave below um, the notes found on buttons six, seven, eight, and nine. So you can hear uh, B, D, F, A, and then again B, D, F, 
A. Uh, on the G row, uh, you've got again, on the pull, all the notes are the notes not found in the chord of G major. So you've got F sharp, I'm just gonna ignore button one for a moment, uh, button two onwards, F sharp, A, C, E, and same thing here, uh, buttons two, three, four, five, exactly an octave below uh, buttons six, seven, eight, and nine. So you've got F sharp, A, C, E, F sharp, A, C, E, and a bit like your old, um, you know, when you used to say face for the spaces of the treble graph, well, this is a kind of a face, but it's not F, it's F sharp. That may or may not help you, I don't know, but it certainly helps me. And I've got an extra A down there. So uh, on the G row, all of the notes on the pull are the notes not found in the chord of G major. So it's quite handy. So if you know that's an F sharp, then you know that's an F sharp. If you know that's an A, you know that's an A. If you know that's uh, a C, you know that's a C. If you know that's an E, you know that's an E. So it's a really good way of, of learning your notes quickly. And you do need to know um, the notes that the buttons provide on this instrument to be successful on it. Now, when we had the major chord and we said button three, four, five, an octave below button six, seven, eight, they were kind of corresponding buttons on both sides. Kind of mirror image, if you like. With the notes on the pull, uh, it's not exactly, it doesn't exactly line up. You've got buttons two, three, four, five, giving you notes an octave below the buttons uh, six, seven, eight, nine. But it's still a handy way of learning the notes, I think, and a good thing to remember. Another useful thing that might help you is that um, adjacent notes played in the same bellows direction on the C and G rows are a fifth apart. So for instance, uh, C row button two on the push is a G, G row button two on the push is a D. So they're, they're a fifth apart. And that works right the way across the concertina. Not, we're not talking about the front row here, the extra row. I'm talking about the C row and the G row. So if I played um, C row button two on the pull, that's a B. And if I play G row button two on the pull, that's an F sharp. So B and F sharp. So on the push, it's G and D, which are a fifth apart. And on the pull, it's B and F sharp, which is a fifth apart. And in fact, you've got that fifth, part everywhere you go. So now over here, doesn't matter where you push or you pull, uh, the two notes you get are a fifth apart. So that's a quite a handy thing to know. So for instance, if you know this note's a C, then you know straight away this note must be a G. Okay, so that's a C and that's a G, a fifth apart. So if you know that this note's a B, this note must be an F sharp. Uh, if you know that this note is a G, this note must be a D. And if you know this note is an A, this one must be an E. See, a fifth apart, whether it's push or pull. Uh, remember, we're not talking about the front row, the helper row, the, the extra row. We're only talking about the C row and the G row. Again, it's a, a really handy thing to know if you're trying to remember uh, uh, what the notes are on the buttons.